Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are starting a new chapter, Control and Coordination, Chapter 7 in the NCRT textbook. So in the life process chapter, we learned about many life processes which are required for maintenance of life. But at the same time, we know uh, the living organisms exhibit a few characteristics. Movement is one among them. We know living organisms move. But this movement is different in different types of organisms. Especially if you see plants and animals, there is a huge difference in their movement. The movement in plants is actually a kind of movement without changing the position. Whereas in animals, we can have the movements without changing position. Like how I am talking to you, my arms are uh, moving or my lips are moving, tongue is moving, my eyelids are moving. But at the same time, I have the capability of changing my position also. This is called a locomotion. So animals can locomote where plants can only move. So, these movements can be classified into two types. One is growth dependent movement, means movement related to growth. That is mainly seen in plants, especially in the case of a seed germinating uh, in the soil, the radical and plumule coming out, later it is producing new features, or a bud blooming into a flower. All these are growth related movements. Whereas, there are growth unrelated movements or growth independent movement also. When I am talking to you, my uh, body is moving, that is not growth related. Or a dog is chasing a cat, that is not a growth related movement. Or an animal is eating or a cat is chewing the cud, that is not growth related movement. Or touch me not, if you just touch the leaves of a touch me not plant, the leaves close, that is also not growth related movement. So movements can be of two types. But whatever be the movement, if it is a growth independent movement, usually it occurs in response to certain triggers in the environment. Simply I will not move, right? Suppose uh, if I walk, I walk towards something or uh, somebody is running, uh, so there will be trigger for that. Suppose a dog is chasing, automatically we run, right? Or something is falling down, I bend down to take it quickly. So all these are kind of response to environment. For a, Or a bright light is coming and falling on into my eyes, I close my eyes. So these are all uh, kind of response to the environment. So there should be a coordinated system in our body which is actually controlled by two systems in the body. One is our nervous system which is responding to the stimuli from the environment, receiving the stimuli and responding to it. The stimuli means the message is coming from the environment, the trigger I told. The second is the muscular system because when I uh, touch a hot object, uh, my nervous system will detect that I am touching a hot object, this is a dangerous situation. But I have to immediately withdraw my hand or my body from that heat to escape from that. So for that I need to use my muscle. So muscular system also uh, helps in this process. So in this chapter basically we are studying in detail the nervous system. So the nervous system has different parts. But ultimately it consists of the nerve cells or neuron. So usually children have confusion with regard to neuron, nerve cell, nerves etc. So understand neuron or nerve cell both are same only. Neurons are otherwise called a nerve cell because it is an individual cell. A bundle of neurons will form a nerve. Okay. So here like any other cell it has got a main cell body but it has got a different structure. Because we have learned the structure of a cell is based on its function. Here it needs to transmit information. So it should be long enough for that. So it has got many small branches around it called the dendrites. These dendrites are actually the parts which are receiving the information from the outside. Then it will pass on to this long branch that is called a axon. And at the end there are basic uh, knobs called a axon ends or the synaptic nodes. Okay, so these are uh, detailed structure of neuron if you want you can see my class 9 tissues neuron um, video is there you can visit that and see. But you don't have need much details about it you just want to see these parts. So these dendrites or the large number of neurons are present in our sense organs which because Sense organs are the organs which are receiving impulses or stimuli from the environment. For example, our eyes receive the signals of sight, whereas our ears will receive the voice or the sound, uh, skin for touch. So all these organs, sense organs have the nerve endings called the dendrites. 
okay so these dendrites are ready to capture the information from the environment so like that we have two receptors we have to study because many different types of receptors are there but you are studying only two one is the olfactory receptor and the second is gestatory receptor so learn these two by heart because it can come for a objective type question or a one mark question. So olfactory means in chemistry also you learn olfactory indicators, right? So it is depending upon the smell. So smell receptors are called olfactory receptors. So naturally where are they located? Inside the nostrils. Second type of receptor is gustatory means it is receiving the sense of taste. So where is it located? On the tongue. So we learned that uh, neurons are responsible for conduction of the impulses or whatever we are receiving. For example, suppose when you are watching my video, your eyes are receiving the si signals of vision. That means sight, uh, my image uh, onto your eyes, there are receptors. So these receptors will be sending it to the brain. Whereas from your ears, my voice will be reaching your brain, right? Or if I am touching, from here the message should reach my brain to interpret that. So what happens is first the dendrites which are present in the uh, sense organs will receive the impulse or the stimulus from the outside. So the dendrites receive the stimulus from the outside or the message from the outside. Then uh, it will pass the message through the axon which is the long part of it. But to make it very fast or in our system this message is passed in the form of electrical impulses okay so once it is received there is a small change happening which will make it into electrical signals and the electrical signals will go fast through this axon and will reach the end of this okay that is the synaptic node so in the form of electrical signals it is being sent but then before going to the next neuron there is a small gap here so that gap is called a synapse okay so we know electricity you are learning in physics about electricity electricity needs a medium for conduction but here there is a gap can the electricity pass no so this part at the synapse there is a chemical reaction happening so that the signal or the message is moving in the form of a chemical signal then it will reach the next neuron as chemical the next dendrite there it will immediately get converted into electrical signal it will move through the axon again they reach the end of the axon where it gets converted into chemical cross the synapse and then move to the next one so it is in the form of electrochemical impulses the messages are passed through our neurons okay so it's a very important question how how do neurons conduct electrical impulses you have to write that it is conducted in the form of electrochemical impulses the messages received by the receptors will be transmitted that means the dendrites will be transmitted through axon in the form of electrical signals once it reaches the synaptic node it will be converted into chemicals and cross, cross the synapse and then uh, on reaching the next dendrite it will again become an electrical signal so this way it is being conducted now here two definitions you might uh, get that is one is about the receptors which I already told they are the specialized tips of nerve cells for receiving the um, impulses from the environment okay at the same and example is olfactory and gestatory another one is what is a synapse synapse is a functional gap between adjacent neurons okay it's not a simple gap something is happening there that's why it is called a functional gap a functional gap between two adjacent neurons is called a synapse so you understood how is this uh, message passing through this neuron so i have drawn here another diagram because once it is going through the neurons finally where is it reaching in the brain but brain will give a command to make the necessary action for the action what is required muscle movement so the muscles to move the message from the brain should come to the muscle so again the electrochemical signals are coming and finally this is suppose this is the last neuron it's the synaptic nerves are ending on the surface of a skeletal muscle because skeletal muscles are the muscles for movement so that part where a neuron meets a muscle that part is called a neuromuscular junction Okay, so neuromuscular junction can be otherwise called a motor end plate so that the signal will go into the muscle. 
So hope you understood all the concepts I taught today. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.